You're watching Seattle Seahawks today. I am Tom down here with updates on roster moves. Jamal Adams and even a KJ Wright update for you guys as well. But we begin with the latest on Jamal Adams. As training camp is on the eve of arriving, it is literally just around the corner, and there still is no deal between Jamal Adams and the Seattle Seahawks. Now, both sides appear to still be working, and they appear to agree that at minimum, Jamal Adams will become the highest paid safety in the NFL. Mike Garofolo of NFL Network chimed in with this update on the contract talks. Quote, they are willing, meaning Seattle, to make him, meaning Adams, according to my sources, the highest paid safety in the NFL. Now, if I'm Jamal Adams, I say, well, I'm a safety and a linebacker. Even those linebackers, some, even those linebackers sometimes make comparable money, you're going to make your case. The bottom line is the Seahawks have already come in at the highest paid safety. Justin Simmons jumped to the top of the market. They are willing to go higher than that. So to me, they're in the right realm already. So I believe at some point before the start of the season, this gets done between the Seahawks and Jamal Adams because they're where they should be as far as making him the highest paid safety. The real discussion right now between the two sides, I think, is how much more than the highest paid safety that Jamal Adams end up getting per year. The safety market is once again due to be exceeded because it's not just Jamal Adams due for a, a new deal. Jesse Bates, Mika Fitzpatrick, Tyron Matthew himself, maybe uh, Derwin James if healthy, uh, Marcus Williams and Marcus May next year once they hit free agency are going to get big time deals. So Jamal Adams is definitely going to get at least $15.25 million. The question is how much more? Does he get to 16, 17, 18? That $18 million per year figure I think is noteworthy because Fred Warner with San Francisco just got $19 million per year. That is a massive figure. Reset the linebacker market, the off-ball linebacker market altogether. Meanwhile, Bobby Wagner is making $18 million per year. I don't think Seattle wants to pay Jamal Adams more than they are paying Bobby Wagner. I think if you're Adams, though, given all the leverage that you have, given the role that you've played, even if you don't get there in the end, I think you ask to be the highest paid defender on the team. Because even though people try to ding Jamal Adams and call him Blitz Boy or whatever, he played really well last season. Like, yes, he was not great in coverage. Look what we did against the run in the Blitz. 11 tackles for loss. 9.5 sacks in an injury-shortened season. Jamal Adams played really well. Trey Flowers, folks, got $18 million per year by getting eight sacks a couple years in a row. Adams got 9.5 in less than 16 games. That does carry value. Meanwhile, Jamal Adams, not great in coverage. That is a red flag that could, in theory, bring down the value. But make no mistake, the leverage here is in the hands of Jamal Adams. It was Seattle who gave up so much to go get him. It's Seattle that in the end is going to have to try to find a way to pay him all of that big time money. Otherwise, this could get ugly with camp almost here. So what do you guys think? Will the Adams deal get done before the season? I don't think Adams holds out of camp. Maybe he isn't involved that much because of his shoulder injury, potentially, but I don't think it I don't think he holds out. So we'll put the benchmark now before the season. Make your predictions. This is the pinned comment on today's video. Type Y for yes or N for no. A Seahawks roster move, however, minor is certainly worth discussing here as well. Cameron Scarlett has joined the organization right before camp. He signed back on Friday, adding extra depth at the running back position. Oh, by the way, as I swear so many depth options for Seattle can do, also brings some return value. He's a kick returner in, in a part-time role for senior year mostly at Stanford. But still, charts a long shot at best to make the 53-man roster. Chris Carson, Rashad Penny, DJ Dallas, Travis Homer, Alex Collins, heck, maybe some of the other depth running backs are all in a little bit better spot to make it work, not to mention fullback Nick Bellore. You see there at the bottom of your, of your screen. Scarlett is not that good. Um, I don't want to be mean, but even at Stanford, 4.2 yards per carry, that's not special. I mean, it's certainly nowhere near Christian McCaffrey, not even Bryce Love level of production. So I think, you know, practice squad guy at best, probably in the end more of a camp body, but it was a roster move, so I did want to at least make note of it.
Now, how do you feel the Seahawks will end up doing this year? Make your predictions for me in the comments section right now. Over or under 9.5 wins for Seattle this season. Type in O for over, type in U for under. Whichever way you're going, you can bet with our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Get a 125% deposit bonus when you go to chatsports.com slash bet and use promo code Seahawks125. 9.5 wins feels, I feel like the over is a good bet on that one. So you want to take my advice, go put some money down and make some money betting on Seattle at chatsports.com slash bet. Don't forget that promo code Seahawks125. Let's talk Seahawks rumors now and look who's back once again. K.J. Wright has reappeared as a story for Seattle thanks to K.J. Wright himself. He says there is still a chance he ends up back in Seattle this year. As we've said before, and there hasn't been that much to change, but it's worth bringing up again since Wright commented on it. Bit of a surprise that Wright is still unsigned. And I will make note, because this is going to come into play when we get to the quote from K.J. Wright, that the Seahawks are planning on giving his roles to other players. Now, here's what Wright said recently about a potential return to Seattle. Quote, yes, there is a chance that I return to Seattle. There is a chance, and I'm not closing the door on Seattle. Going into free agency, I thought it'd be a no-brainer that I return. But they're going to wait until training camp, so we'll see. That quote is very intriguing to me because I had thought it was a no-brainer that K.J. Wright gets paid more money elsewhere and he leaves and gets a nice fat contract and happily says, sorry, Seattle, I'm going to go get paid elsewhere. I'm going to go get paid more elsewhere. Apparently, Wright didn't feel the same way, which I find interesting given the previous moves this organization made. More on that in a second, but first... With Wright saying there's still a chance, assign a percentage. What do you believe is the percent chance that K.J. Wright ends up re-signing in Seattle? Get your votes in for me right now in the comments section. Now, what I'm about to say is not a dig whatsoever at K.J. Wright. He is an immensely talented football player. I thought he played very well last year as a Base package, strong side linebacker, and then in nickel kind of rotated more to the weak side linebacker role. A role he could still play, I'd argue, both of them for Seattle if they wanted him. He's a good football player. There were games, not the season, but games last year where I thought K.J. Wright was out playing Bobby Wagner. And you guys know I think Bobby Wagner is the best linebacker in the NFL. But the second that Seattle drafted Jordan Brooks, who is now set to start at weak side linebacker for them, I had assumed, okay, Wright's gone after this year. Their plan is to give Jordan Brooks that role. The, the plan right now is Jordan Brooks is the, is the full-time starter at linebacker. He's playing all three downs. He's not really going to come off the field unless he's injured or needs a breather or whatever. And then at the strong side linebacker spot, Darrell Taylor is going to take over that role. Now, it's a bit of a position change for Taylor. Keep that in mind. He shed some weight, by the way, before beyond his... Let's did 267. But that, that role in this kind of more Bayer-focused front and base packages for Seattle will mostly be a pass rusher. So if K.J. Wright's super cheap, okay, maybe they bring him back as a depth linebacker. But I think the plan here is for Darrell Taylor to take over the base package snaps and Jordan Brooks to take over the full-time snaps. And that means Wright's not going to be a starter. So I am a bit surprised Wright appears to think he was going to be back. That's not the route I thought the organization was going to go. If the cost ends up being cheap enough, yes, there's still a chance. But right now, it's very much a wait and see at best for Wright and a potential Seattle reunion.